All right. Depreciations. The three types of depreciation we need to look at is flat rate, unit costs, and diminishing. What we need to do is, you need to understand what depreciation is. You need to understand the three types of depreciation methods. Be able to link depreciation to sequences and solve problems involving uh, depreciations. I know there are a lot of work that I'm going to give you today, but I don't see you on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, so you've got a few days to work on that. I need to do a few, few more things to finish off um, this part. All right? So the three types of depreciation, if you could uh, write down flat rate, unit cost, and diminishing. Now, why we need to depreciate? For example, if you buy an asset, uh, say, for me, for work, I buy an iPad. So for me to be able to claim it from uh, my tax, I need to depreciate it. I cannot actually uh, claim the full amount. So it's based on the age of the assets and where and tear due to use. So for me, work, my laptop, my, uh, my uh, iPad, I depreciate it over time. <coughs> now depreciation, Generally, you do it to deal with tax, all right? The age of the assets and when do you need to replace the asset. That's important. And it's wear and tear due to use. So the three types, flat rate, unit, cost, and diminishing. So let's go, to, we're going to look at all three today, starting off with flat rate depreciation. Flat rate depreciation, the value of asset is depreciated by a fixed amount each year. So for example, if I buy something for $3,000 and I say that I'll depreciate it by $200 every year, that's a fixed amount. So from $300 after one year, it would be, uh, sorry, $3,000 after one year will be $2,000 uh, $2, after the second year will be $2,600, so on and so forth is depreciated by the fixed amount. The word fix is a fixed amount is important. All right? Now you need to know the word book value. The book value is value of the asset recorded on the balance sheet. This is based on the original cost of the asset less depreciation. So what happened is now say if I buy something at three thousand dollars, right in two o two two, beginning of two o two two. At the end of two o two two, I depreciate it by uh, two hundred dollars, so it's two eight o o at the start of two o two two, and it's two of two o two two. And then at the end of two o two three, I depreciate it by another. $200, 2600. Zero, zero. So you can see that it's a fixed amount of take away $200. All right, that's a fixed amount. Now, what happened is at the end, when you cannot depreciate it anymore, it may not necessarily be $0. It could be there's a certain amount. And the final value of the asset is known as the residual value. So it could be after five years, you want to get a new one. So after five years, you may depreciate it down to 2200. Zero, zero. You get a new set of a laptop or whatever. All right. That is your final value or the residual value. All right. Final value or the residual value of the asset. So you need to be able to work out the depreciation expense which is the cost minus residual value over the useful life of the asset. So in this case, the cost for me is $3,000. The residual value is 2200. And then the useful life of the asset is five years. That is uh, 800 divided by five, which is uh, $160. <laughs> So that's a depreciation expense, expense. This is how you calculate that. Now, for flat rate depreciation, 
it is useful to use an arithmetic sequence model, this depreciation. So know that um, flat rate depreciation, you can use arithmetic <coughs> sequence. That's important. All right? So generally, it's important to know that it's fixed amount, the book value, and look at the final or residual value. Let's go to example one. All right? Example one. It states that George bought his computer at $6,800. He depreciated, he depreciated uh, his computer at a cost of $680 per annum. Determine the book value of computer after eight years. Determine when the value of the computer is zero. All right? So what you need to do is think about, because it is, it is a flat rate, you could actually just basically work out after eight years is 6800 zero zero minus eight times 680, which is 1360. So answer the question, the book value of the computer after eight years is 1360. All right? Make sure that you answer the question. Determine when the value of the uh, computer is zero. All right? So you could do a few things. One, you could solve it by using 6800 minus 680 times t, which is a time equals to zero. Using your solve, or you can rearrange it, 680t equals to 6800. Therefore, t equals to 10. All right? Or you could actually use your uh, sequences. You can either solve it this way or use sequences. All right? Of course, you need to answer the question. Answer the question, the uh, value of the computer is 0 at 10 years. All right? Now, for the same question, if I want to use sequence, what I would do is write down Tn plus 1 equals to Tn minus 6800. All right. Now, because there is an initial value, what I'm going to use is T0 equals to 6800. And you need to find when T equals to 0 using your class bet, t10 equals to zero. So after 10 years. After 10 years, the value of the computer is zero. All right, you can use sequence, arithmetic sequence. Now, let's try the second example, please. If you take some time to work on it for a while, all right? Let's try this question. Now, I've given you the residual value, which is a final value, after 16 years. How are you going to work out the straight line expense for the machinery? Now, the other word for flat rate is also straight line. All right? Straight line is flat rate. Flat rate. Because you are actually depreciating by a fixed amount, you can see that it's a linear. The line will be linear if you are uh, drawing it as a graph. Now remember, the graph has to be, you cannot join the, the dots, always have just the dots. All right, let's have a look at how we would work out. So we know that uh, the straight lines expand, uh, we need to work out the straight line expense for the uh, machinery, which is the same as the depreciation expense. All right. So therefore, you know that uh, we need to use three, 300,000 minus 20,000 divided by 16, which will give me 17500. All right? So the straight line, line expense is 175. Oh, oh. One, well, uh, 70,500. And then determine the value of this machinery. That is actually the amount you depreciate it by. 
All right, this is the amount you depreciate it by every year. So the straight line expense or the de depreciation expense is the amount you depreciate it by every year. All right, so here what you need to do is part B is 300,000 minus 10 times 175,000. That will give me 125,000. So the value or the book value of the machinery after 10 years is 125,000. All right, again, try using sequence. Sequence part B, you know that Tn plus 1 equals to Tn minus 175,000. Uh, 1750, that's all not 000. Zero, zero, zero. So T0 equals to 300,000. You can either use sequence or use this method. Really doesn't matter. So flat rate or straight line is pretty straightforward because it is by always by a fixed amount. And you know that it's arithmetic. Now the unit cost depreciation is actually based on the number of units produced by the asset during the year. All right? So what you need to think about is when the asset or machinery produce certain things, after certain units has produced, it is depreciated based on the units. All right? So you need to know the depreciation cost per unit is equal to cost minus residual value divided by total number of units produced. So for example, if you've got a photocopier, every time after you photocopy once, there's a depreciation based on each page. All right? It could be uh, one page, or sometimes it's a little bit uh, easier if you look at depreciation after every 1,000 page. All right, or unit cost. Or for example, if you are manufacturing uh, a machinery that's manufacturing the case of a laptop, after manufacturing each case, it will decrease by a certain amount. The value will depreciate by a certain amount. And you can work out the depreciation expense, which is just the depreciation uh, cost per unit times the number of units produced. All right? Again, this one you can use an arithmetic sequence. So the depreciation cost per unit generally is given. If not, you need to work out the cost minus residual per total number of units produced. and work out the depreciation expense. All right, while you're writing those down. Did anyone not have one of these booklets from last term? 
Last, uh, you will not hit the last. I've produced enough for everyone, I think. All right, let's have a look at example three. Now, a piece of machinery purchased for 330,000 has a residual value of 50,000 and is expected to produce 140,000 units over its useful life. All right, if the machine produces 10,000 units in the first year, calculate the depreciation expense for the first year and state the value of the machinery at the end of the first year. So, what you need to do is use this to work out the depreciation expense. All right, let's think about what is the depreciation cost per unit. So the depreciation cost per unit cost per unit that is equals to three three zero 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 minus fifty thousand divided by total units produced which is two dollars per unit so what you can see that after you produce one unit it's reduced by two dollars after you produce but uh, two units it reduced by four dollars and so on and so forth and again it's a straight line it is it is based on the number of units so in the first year it produces ten thousand units is ten thousand times two which is twenty thousand and therefore, 330000 minus 20,000 equals to uh, 310000. So part A, the value of the machinery, at the end of the year, equals to three one zero 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 zero. All right, please remember your unit. Okay? So now we can see that it says there's a production is ten thousand units every year. Ten thousand unit every year. So for part B we do know that uh, you can work out 10,000 units times 2 times 10 years, which is 200,000. So therefore, the value of the machinery is equal to 330000 minus 200,000, which is 130000. Alright? Now, let's think about how to work out part C. Deeper, determine the useful life of the machinery. So, what we can do is we need to know we can work out because it is producing consistently. 10,000 units every year. So it's 330,000 times, uh, sorry, minus, not times. Minus, now, oops. Minus, let's think about T. T, we don't know when it is. But we know that every year is 2 times 10,000 because each unit, after you produce each unit, is reduced by $2. And it pro after you produce 10,000 units, it's reduced by 2 times $10,000 equals to 0. And you can work out if you use your solve function. Oh, uh, equals to 
Ah, sorry, it's not fifty thousand. The final value is uh, is not zero. It's uh, fifty thousand. My fault. It's fifty thousand. My fault. Fifty thousand. So therefore, if you work out using soft, T is actually 14 years. All right. Or you can use your, or you can use your sequence. You know that T n plus one equals to T n minus uh, 20,000 because it's every year. All right. T naught equals to three, um, three O. Oh, oh, oh. So you need to work out when T something, T whatever, equals to T question mark, I would say, equals to um, 50,000. Use your, use your class pad. Try using your class pad now, maybe. Grab your class pad and uh, try working on it. <laughs> Let's say, use your class pad. If I put a question mark, it's good 50,000. So you should know that that is 14 years. Use your class pad, please. Try using your class pad. So if you write down class pad, we know that T n plus 1 equals to T n minus 20,000. Because it's every year. So T naught equals to 3, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right? Let's use your class pad. So we're going to do sequences. We know that what I need the, the type is A naught. So if I clear everything, so T n plus one equals to T n minus twenty thousand, and T naught is three hundred thirty. And if you keep going down, scroll through, you know that T14 is 50,000. So uh, the useful, the, the, the life of the machinery is actually 14 years. Any question there before I move on to the next one? So you can see that the first two, which is a flat rate and the um, unit cost, is actually arithmetic. So what we're going to look on, uh, work on for the next one, you can see that diminishing balance depreciation, this is going to be a geometric. It's reduced by a fixed percentage of the book value at the beginning of each year. So it's possible to use a geometric sequence. So for example, if I've got started with 10,000, all right, I depreciate by 10%. All right, so the first, this is uh, initial. Say after one year. After one year is 10,000 minus 10,000 times 10%, which is 0 .0, 0 0.1. All right, and then after two years is, which is 9,000. 9,000 minus uh, 9,000 times 0 0.1, and so on and so forth. All right? Let's try the question. The value of a new car is 28,000. Find the book value of this car after four years if the depreciation, uh, if it depreciates by 8% of its book value. So we know that initial, this is V0, or T0, or whatever. So after four years, so we, what we can do is either use sequence 
or we can use V naught equals to eight O O O V N plus one equals to zero point. Now eight percent. Eight percent when you when you reduce it by is actually um, two eight zero zero times zero point nine two. Correct? That is the uh, depreciation that you use is 0 0.92 VN and V0 equals to 2800. So you can use your class back. Or you can use V4 equals to 2800 times 0 0.92 to the power of 4. If you use your calculator, it will give you 200.59.00288. Now, normally, I would write up to at least three decimal places. So we know that the value uh, after four years is two decimal places, 20,000. All right? Because you know it's 0.288, so therefore I'm going to give, leave it with two decimal places. That's no, uh, there is no whole numbers. All right, let's try with the class tag. V naught equals to 28000, Vn plus 1 equals 0 0.92 Vn. All right, let's use your class tag. Okay, I need to uh, clear all that. That is 0 0.92 and 2800. And then list it. Now, here you must always tap on that value to make sure that you see what is the final value. Like I say, always write down to two to three, at least three decimal places. I will just copy the whole thing down and then um, um, make it two decimal places when you answer the question so that the examiners know what you're doing. All right? So that's all I have for you today. It's all about depreciation. Three types of depreciation flat rate and unit cost, which is arithmetic sequence, and then diminishing, which is geometric sequence. All right. So three things. You've got a few exercises to do. Like I say, you've got time to do it, but I would like you to at least make a start with the flat rate and then the unit cost. Diminishing geomet geometric sequence, you've got um, first day to do work on it. All right. I'm going to finish, it off, finish off the lesson for the day.